He's the editor of a German financial journal, who rose through the Nazi ranks to replace Hammer Schacht as Minister of Economics and head of the Reichsbank, Germany's state bank. Funk was a talented pianist, expert in classical music. He was known in Nazi circles for his love of cigars, all-night parties, and gold jewelry. Funk came to the dock at Nuremberg after being hospitalized for chronic bladder infections, a condition that had gotten Funk out of the German army during World War I. Here on direct examination, Funk describes his surprise when Adolf Hitler invited him to take a high position in the government. Dr. Funk, you were state secretary in the propaganda ministry until 1937. At the end of November 1937, you became Reich's Minister of Economics after your predecessor, Dr. Schach, had left that post. Can you tell us, with the necessary brevity of course, how that change took place and why you were called to that post? They took me completely by surprise too. During a performance at the opera, the Führer, who was present, took me aside in the vestibule during an intermission and told me that the difference between Schacht and Göring could no longer be bridged and that he was therefore compelled to dismiss Schacht from his office as Minister of Economics and was asking me to take over the post of Minister of Economics as he was very well acquainted with my knowledge and experience in the field of economics. He also asked me to contact Reichsmarschall Göring, who would explain everything else. Nun haben wir im Verlauf des jetzigen Verfahrens von einer Reihe von Besprechungen gehört. Now, in the course of these proceedings, we have heard about a series of discussions which Hitler had with generals and other personalities, and which concerned military and political matters. All these were discussions which, we must say today, stood in closest connection with preparations for war. At which of these discussions were you present, and what did you gather from them? I was never called into political and military discussions, and I did not participate in any of these discussions which were mentioned here in connection with the charge of planning an aggressive war so far as discussions with the Führer are concerned. I was also not informed about the contents of these discussions. And as far as I can remember, I was hardly ever present at the discussions with the Rice Marshal when they uh, Your testimony since late Friday afternoon. And uh, as we understand it from your statements, you admit none of the charges made against you in the indictment in any, agree, in any degree, with possibly one exception. I'm not clear as to whether or not you were making an admission this morning with respect to your part in the persecution of the Jews. Would you tell us now whether or not you intended to admit your own guilt for the part that you played in the persecution of the Jews. Ich habe heute Morgen gesagt, I said this morning that I had a deep sense of guilt and a deep sense of shame about the things which were done to the Jews in Germany, and that at the time when the terror and violence began, I was involved in a strong conflict with my conscience. I felt I could almost say that a great injustice was being done. However, I did not feel guilty in respect to the indictment against me here. That is, that according to the indictment, I was guilty of crimes against humanity because I signed the directives for carrying out laws which had been issued by superior officers. Laws that had to be made so that the Jews would not be entirely deprived of their rights and so that they could be given some legal protection, at least in regard to compensation and settlement. I am admitting guilt against myself a moral guilt, but not a guilt because I signed the directives for carrying out the laws. In any event, not a guilt against humanity. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the gold in the Reichsbank. How much gold did you have on hand at the end of 1941, roughly? And don't give me any long story about it because I'm not too interested, but I'm really trying to find out if you were short on gold in 1941. 
The gold reserve which I took over amounted to about 500 million Reichsmarks when I received the post of Schacht. It was increased in any substantial manner only by the Belgian gold, as far as I know. When did you start to do business with the SS, Mr. Funk? Business with the SS? I have never done that. Yes, sir. Business with the SS. Are you sure about that? I want you to take this very seriously. It's about the end of your examination, and it's very important to you. Well, now, let's see. You were not ordinarily in the habit in the Reichsbank of accepting jewels, eyeglass spectacles, watches, cigarette cases, uh, pearls, diamonds. Uh, gold dentures, were you? Did you ordinarily accept that sort of material for deposit in your bank? Nein, das ist meines Erachtens auch völlig ausgeschlossen, dass die Bank das tun durfte. Well, there could be no question, in my opinion, that the bank had no right to do that, because these things were supposed to be delivered to an entirely different place. If I am correctly informed about the legal position, these things were supposed to be delivered to the Reich office for precious metals and not to the Reichsbank. Diamonds, jewels and precious stones were not the concern of the Reichsbank because it was not a place of sale for these things. And, in my opinion, if the Reichsbank did that, then it was unlawful. That's exactly right. If that happened, then the Reichsbank committed an illegal act. The Reichsbank was not authorized to do that. I asked you yesterday, and I ask you again now, did you ever hear of anybody depositing his gold dentures in a bank for safekeeping? You saw that film, and you saw the gold bridge work, or mouth plate, didn't you, and the other uh, dental work? Certainly nobody ever deposited that with a bank. Isn't that was, a fact? Was die, die, the, das Bild mit den Zehen anbelangt? As far as the teeth are concerned, this is a special case. Where these teeth came from, I do not know. It was not reported to me, nor do I know what was done with those teeth. I am convinced that items of this sort, when they were delivered to the Reichsbank, had to be turned over to the Office for Precious Metals, for the Reichsbank was not a place where gold was worked. Neither do I know whether the Reichsbank even had the technical facilities to work with this metal. I do not know about that. Uh, now, not only did uh, people not deposit gold teeth, but they never deposited eyeglass uh, rims, did they, such as you saw in the picture? That is right. These things are, of course, no regular deposits. That goes without saying. 